Hey there everyone, it's Cloud Chief, and in today's video I'm going over A Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, where to go after you finish the plateau. Everything in its path low a century ago. So once you've cleared the plateau and you've gotten the paraglider, literally the entire world is open up to you. You can go anywhere you want. However, they are directing you to head towards a certain village to go meet someone named Impa. And you do really want to head in that direction as there are a lot of things that will benefit you following the path along the story before it really opens up. So now the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and get the tower in this area. That'll go ahead and give us access to the map and we can see everything and we'll have a better idea of the direction we want to go. So go ahead and look off to the east, mark the tower, and then start heading towards it because that's going to be our first objective. So now once we get to the tower, go ahead and climb to the top. Once we get to the top, we're of course going to want to activate the tower so that way we get the map. But then we get a nice little bonus on top of that. We get the Shiki sensor which allows us to tell when we're close to a shrine. Which we're going to put that to use right now. So now that we have the map, if you look off to the east, you'll see two mountains with a ravine going between the two mountains. We're going to need to head in that direction as that leads towards the next town. However, as you're in the ravine, headed to the direction you'll go to, you'll notice that our sensor is going off that we just got from the tower. And we definitely want to go hit up that shrine. The shrine is extremely important and that's mainly because of the treasure chest. To get through the shrine, you just need to step on the switch and step off the switch, timing it correctly so that way the ball will get into the correct hole. You do that multiple times and you'll get through the shrine. It's pretty straightforward. However, at the end, you're going to need to grab one of these barrels and put it on the switch so that way the ground that you're on will go at an angle so that way you can get to the chest. Because this chest is something that you want to get as early as possible because being able to have climbing gear so that way you climb faster is just going to make your game that much easier. So now that you have your first piece of climbing gear, getting around is going to be that much easier. There are two shrines at the top of these mountains, and I recommend taking them out because getting more shrines is just going to make it that much easier since you will have hearts or stamina. Next, we want to keep heading east until the whole area opens up. At that point, you should notice a shrine just slightly to your north, along with a new area that we can visit, which is actually a stable. Now you want to go ahead and complete the shrine. After the shrine's taken care of, you're going to want to then start wandering around the stable. You'll find lots of these stables all across Hyrule. Uh, start talking to NPCs in here, you can get quests, there are shops, and it's a stable, you can go ahead and catch a wild horse and then make it your own horse, which is going to be the next thing that we want to focus on, is getting a horse so that way it'll make traveling the rest of the way that much easier. Now that we've gone ahead and caught our wild horse, we can take it back to the stable. Once the horse is registered, the horse is now permanently yours, and now we can head back out on our journey to go see Impo. Head out in the direction going north from the stable until you come to a bridge. Go ahead and cross the bridge and then the only way to go will be east. You'll go east up the hill until you run into a very interesting character. This is Hetsu, and he needs your help. The goblins up over the corner have stolen his maracas, so you're going to want to go ahead and take out the goblins and get his maracas back. Once you've gotten the maracas, head back to Hetsu and go ahead and give them to him. 
He will then ask you for some correct seeds. If you have at least three seeds, which hopefully at this point you've got, done enough exploring and found three of them, then he can go ahead and increase your inventory slot twice. I highly recommend getting your weapon slot increased, but go ahead and choose two slots, and that's all that he will increase at this time. When you find him further in the game, he will increase your slots further. Now you want to go ahead and hop back on your horse and keep heading up the path that we've been going on and that should lead you directly to Impa. There should be no more distractions along the way. Once you go ahead and make it to the town, be sure to go do the shrine. You want to have the shrine taken out so that way you can quickly work back here. This is a town that you will be frequently coming to. So once you finish with the shrine, you can go ahead and start wandering around town. Check out the shops. They actually have stealth armor in the armor shop here, which is highly recommended. It'll allow you to sneak up on enemies and even sneak up to grab animals and uh, insects and other little things without them knowing that you're coming. It's a very good set and I highly recommend it. And then of course we want to go ahead and talk to Impa while we're here. So, once Impa is done laying out all the exposition for you, she recommends that you go to Hateno Village so that way you can go meet someone named Pura who can upgrade your Sheikah Slate. There is one last thing that you want to do before leaving this town and that's to go ahead and hit up the Great Fairy Fountain. If you go to the shrine and head straight up the hill, the fountain will be right in front of you. Just go ahead and trade it some rupees and you'll be allowed to upgrade your armor. Once you're finally done all your business in town, you can go ahead and fast travel back to the Dueling Peak stable. Once back there, go ahead and talk to the guy at right at the head of the stable to go ahead and get your horse back. You get your horse back and then we are going to be headed out to go see Pura. Now you're going to want to go ahead and head north like we did before when we left the stable. However, when we come to the bridge, you're going to immediately go east and you're not going to cross the bridge. Continue to go east along the path until you end up at Fort Hateno. Before you actually go inside the fort, you actually want to go around and hit up all the guardians right outside the fort and make sure you get at least three screws and three shafts. So now we want to go ahead and head into the fort. After heading past the forest and riding along the path, you'll see a path that shoots off to the north on your left hand side that you want to go ahead and take. If you go back there and it's nighttime, you might happen to see a statue with glowing eyes. If you shoot it, a shrine will appear. Even if it's not nighttime, you still want to head back here because there are a bunch of ore deposits and it's a very easy way to make money really quick. So after we head back out and get back on the path, you'll start going up a hill. Off to your right, you should see the tower. We're going to want to go ahead and hit that up so that way we can get the map coverage for the area. So, after you're done climbing the tower and you've gotten the map for the area, you're going to continue to head east. A little bit further and we will hit up Henteno Village. Now that you made it to the village, go ahead and hit up the shrine. You want to make sure you have this shrine because you're going to be fast traveling back here a decent bit. After that, keep heading to the back of the town and up the hill and you will get to Pura's house. Once you've gotten to Pura's house and you go talk to her, you'll find out that she needs you to go get a blue flame so she can upgrade your Sheikah Slate. Go ahead and follow the waypoint on your map to go to the blue flame and use your torch to go ahead and bring the flame all the way up. 
Also, these are these little lamps along the way that you can actually put the flame in. This is very useful in case you by actually hit the run button so that way you put your torch away and the flame goes out or it happens to start raining. You can just go back to the lamp rather than going back to the original furnace. Once you've gotten back to Purr's house, go ahead and light the furnace that is outside the house and then go in and talk to her. And since you already got the screw and the shaft, go ahead and upgrade your camera and your bombs. At this point, the game is pretty much fully open to you. They want you to go back and talk to Impa since you have the pictures recovered on your Shiki slate, but you pretty much start wandering around wherever you want. But before I cut you loose, there are two shrines very close by that I want us to go hit up. The first shrine that I want us to hit up, I just marked on the map right here. Now this shrine, it is in the mountains. Even with the warm doublet, you will still take damage for the cold. So you are either one, gonna want some healing items, so that way you can recover hearts, or two, have some warm food that you can go ahead and keep yourself warm so you're not losing hearts when you go across there. I personally never bothered using the food that you use to get the warm doublet, so this is the perfect time to use that here. Also, there will be no enemies we're encountering on our way to this shrine. To get to this shrine, just paraglide north of Pura's house to the mountain. Look for an ideal spot where you think it'll be easy to paraglide across to the other side. Once you're on the other side of the mountain, just head northwest. You just keep going northwest and eventually your shrine sensor will start going off. Just continue following your sensor until you get to the shrine. Your sensor will eventually lead you up to a cliff. Go ahead and jump off the cliff and use your paraglider to get to the bottom and you should find the shrine there. Go ahead and enter the shrine and there is no trial to do. It's just a blessing. So you can immediately open the chest and get the prize that we came here for. Now that you've gotten the climbing gear, we want to go ahead and fast travel back to Pura's house. At that point, we are going to want to head straight south to the beach. Once we are on the beach, the goal is to head straight south to that shrine that's just sitting in the water all by itself. At this point in the game with having minimal stamina and gear, the best way that i found to get there is to use the ice blocks. Just make ice blocks every little bit and then swim to the next one and then make another one. That way you're regaining your stamina and you can make it to the island. Once you make it to the island, go ahead and click the panel so that way you can fast travel back here. You're not going to do this shrine at this current time as it is a major test of strength. In this video, I will not be going into details on how to take the major test of strength. I will be doing that in another video. However, you do want to clear this as this gives you access to the climbing body piece. And with that shrine done, you've barely started the game and you already have all three climbing pieces, making it significantly easier to get around in the game. This is definitely my suggestions for starting the game out because it's going to give you that much more of a significant advantage, especially since all the shrines with the climbing gear are relatively close to the starting areas. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you got some value out of it, and may you have success in all you do.